The biggest and the most beloved holiday for Russians is New Year. We decorate our homes, prepare presents and put them under the New Year tree. Yeah, no Christmas tree, but New Year tree artificial at my home this year. And we cook a lot of traditional food. And this video is about Russian New Year food. Today I'm going to bring you to my local supermarket, where we're gonna shop for all this stuff for our New Year table. And then we are going to cook something really, really traditional that most of Russians will have on their New Year tables. So my mother and I took this well-decorated New Year bus to the closest hypermarket. That's a real word for a super big supermarket in Russia. Of course, we might go to a nearest Magnit supermarket or to a local Soviet-like market, but they aren't any good. So we took the bus, walked along the highway, passed the bushes, passed under the heating pipes and then crossed the railroad, where my mom came up with the thought that such a place might be very exotic for foreigners. <laughs> and finally we rushed between beautifully painted garages, just to see our destination – Lenta Hypermarket. <laughs> We have five different items for our grocery shopping list. That's everything for salad Olivier. That's everything for crab salad. That's everything for baked chicken with smashed potato. Some kind of zakuski. Woo, that's, that's looking cool. And also some other kind of stuff. And I am really curious how much it's gonna be. First thing we gotta get is vegetables. I think it will cause us the biggest trouble because look, so many people are picking fresh fruits and vegetables here and in Russia the system goes like that that you take the stuff you want and then you gotta um, wait it on a special machine like this one and when there are so many people like it is here today you gotta wait long lines the only kind of cucumbers we found here such kind of long smooth cucumbers that cost two dollars per kilo and it's actually not the best ones but we don't have a choice, it's winter and it's the only I can find at this store. For tomatoes we have much bigger choice. We are getting this one, looking nice, pretty nice, tomato na vietke, and it costs $2 for half a kilo. Typical choice for most of people will be $2 for a kilo for such kind of tomatoes, but they don't look very good, so I don't want to take it. Like, just look at this. And the most expensive tomato actually costs like three times more per kilo, and they look like, I don't know, Nice. Anyways, we are getting such kind of tomatoes. We had potato in our list too, but apparently my granny went to um, grocery shopping yesterday and she bought some potatoes, so we are not getting it today. The last things that we are taking from here is fresh green stuff. There are individual packs with deals, there are individual packs with such kind of green onion and other stuff. But I actually like such kind of nabor, which means a set of greens. Uh, that is all together the dill, the onion and the parsley, which is a perfect fit for our today's shopping list. And while I was picking the dill and the stuff, my mom is waiting the cucumbers. And I guess that's all. That's the onion and apparently kiwi <laughs> that is not going for our new year table, it just goes uh, as a treat for my nephew. Teplinki! <laughs> okay. For butter broths we're gonna get some bread, two kinds, first baguette and black bread, something like black rye bread. It will go for butter broth with salmon and fish. I'm getting this kind of bread, again baked at this very place, and it's quite expensive. It's like one dollar compared to a typical price of something like half from that or even cheaper. Anyways, it looks good. So one of the reasons why we came to this store a little bit far from home, not to the closest one, is the variety of stuff we can find here. And you can see it perfectly at this row, like a lot of different kind of stuff. There are some really cheap stuff like less than a dollar for a can of black olives. And on all the stuff we may be getting this huge can of black olives. It's only three dollars for a liter, for one kilo of them. We also gotta get some green peas for our salads and the corn. I think we are going to get something like this. Heinz or Bandiel are just 
quite popular here in Russia and it cost about one dollar, maybe a little bit more. I just received some use. My granny already bought green peas and corn, so we are not gonna buy it today. Next Olivia thing is ham and we have plenty of things to choose from. People usually cook Olivia not only with ham, um, chicken or even beef might be alright for that. But I don't want to trouble myself too much with cooking too many dishes, too many meals at one single day. Among all this stuff we have on here, I think we're gonna choose this Vichina Kurine, which is chicken ham from a local brand Sip Kalbasa. It's literally made in my hometown taking this. Right next to ham I found a shelf with lots of crab meat and here's the thing, when I was traveling abroad I never found such kind of crab meat we have here because all of this is imitation and not real. It even says crab stick imitation and some of it says that it's actually this meat uh, of natural crab but you know they can put just like I don't know one percent half percent of uh, real crab inside and write that. So I'm going to take this one because crab salad is something really traditional <laughs> at least in our family and I believe in many other families in Russia. We actually have a really huge variety of such kind of red fish starting from the cheapest one that looks okay a little bit suspicious and to some really good stuff which cost twice even three times more and this salmon which cost like three point half dollars for 200 grams okay let's take it <laughs> eggs are just lying like this and it costs so uh, 83 rubles a bit more than one dollar and that is C1, I think. Yeah, C1. So let's take these eggs and mayonnaise, maybe from here, maybe from there. Let's have a closer look. Apparently, Russian people love mayonnaise a lot. I don't eat that often, but a typical Russian, including my mom, loves it and buys a lot of mayonnaise. Interesting thing about Russian mayonnaise is that we have it sold in such kind of plastic packs, plastic bags, and it's the most popular way of buying it. But there are also some bigger size in such kind of containers which I typically don't buy and my mom she actually prefers such kind of mayonnaise my have Provencal with lemon juice but we're gonna get the bigger one right next to mayonnaise there are a lot of dairy products and we are going to get some milk so this one is yesterday's this one is today's and we are actually how does it look like it's quite cute. We have two kinds of milk, basically the bagged milk and the bottle milk. And I don't know if there's any difference in taste. I usually take bottles because it's more convenient. But uh, my mom and granny, they like to have such kind of bagged milk. It's a little bit cheaper, I guess, and must taste all the same. We're also gonna get a huge piece of butter. That's like 400 grams, 82% butter. It costs quite expensive, but it should be good. I hope you enjoyed this video so far and learned something new about Russia. And if you want to know more about shopping and more about groceries we have here, I actually made a couple of videos about that. I think I'll link it here. You can watch it after this video. Yeah, coming back to shopping, we have a huge row of охлажденная птица, which is like the chicken and chicken-like stuff. And we're gonna find some chicken legs. No legs, that's no legs, that's Hey, that's definitely no legs. I think it should be somewhere... No. Oh, somewhere here. So, Golin Seplotka Broilera, which is exactly what we need. And here is caviar. It's funny that they have the standalone cabinet right for caviar. It's quite expensive and not here, right here. And when you want to buy it, they actually protect it like... It's quite funny for me to see such kind of protection <laughs> on every um, can of caviar. So this is quite expensive. One tiny can for more than $10. And there's even stuff like this, black caviar, for half a hundred dollars. And may just look at this, such kind of stuff, such kind of look for caviar that cost almost a hundred of dollars. You can read this one differently. The correct way is say Ikra Putina, but a funny way to say Ikra Putina, which means Putin's caviar which is not. And I'm going to take this Ikra Lasosive, Salmon Caviar. Hey, what kind of protection is that? Oh, mate, I can just take it. And apparently my mom said that this kind of little thing is not enough for us and she wanted to try this kind of caviar, which is 
uh, twice cheaper. I'm not sure if it will be twice worse. I think they might be more or less the same. The difference is it's different kind of fish, but it's also red and red caviar. Another thing for our butterbrots will be sproti, spreads. It's such kind of cheap fish, which cost more and more every single year. 100 rubles for now. And with this you can make really nice, delicious butterbrots. We are also going to get some cream cheese for one of our zakuski. And I found the only cream cheese without any taste, because others they go with cucumbers and greens, with tomato, with Italian tomato, with um, white mushroom, and it's literally the only one with no taste at all. Mm. Oh no, mate, that's with mushrooms. Okay, give up with cream cheese with no taste and getting this velenu with um, fresh greens. We have only two things left in our shopping list, that's champagne and also the mandarins, and I'm a little bit terrified to know how much does this shopping cart cost, because we got quite a lot of stuff and that's gonna be a little bit expensive. This is my favorite kind of champagne that I buy every single new year when I, when I celebrate it at home. So let's take this one. And there's actually a lot of things to choose from, starting from some Russian champagne. Yeah, Russian champagne for quite low price. It must be somewhere over here. Don't get tricked by the Italian name of it and Italian flag. It's actually made in Russia and it cost just three and a half dollars for this bottle. And I think everyone would also like to get some red wine. Um, this one is not red wine. I think it is somewhere over there. Yeah, wine is over here and we could have take some Georgian wine. It's Vino Rossi, which means Russian wine. It's not. You are New Zealand. Uh, you are is South Africa. Um, there is some Chile, Germany, USA wine, and we are looking for Georgian wine. Oh, here it is, Georgian wine. A lot of things to choose from and actually I think it's one of my favorite kind of wine. In not exactly these bottles, but just Georgian wine. And we are going to take this Sapiravi bottle. That's good. And by the way, it also has such kind of protection. Apparently, this one is more expensive but has no protection. That one has protection. I have no idea why it is like this. The last thing, a very New Year thing, is mandarins. That's the entire pack for a little bit more than $2. Let's get this. Все купили? Что набираешь? Oh, such kind of halva. I actually have no idea how to translate this kind of stuff, halva in Russian. But basically that is a kind of candy made from sunflower seeds and perhaps with some oil and sugar. It's actually delicious. So the system is quite hilarious. I have to remember the number and numbers go something like 1122. I remember that this halva is 1002. Oh, this one is actually quite famous abroad, I think. I received messages from many countries that people actually sold this and tried this kind of candy. There's actually so many different candies, including tiny Kit Kats, tiny Nesquik, tiny Snickers, and tiny Twix. I wonder if only one or two in Twix. Feels like only one. And besides candy, I think we can get such kind of marshmallow. Not American kind of marshmallow, but Russian style. And right next to it, I found such kind of um, berries in uh, sugar powder. I think this might be delicious. Let's take it too. And finally, the cat's food. I'm not sure how viscous is good for our cat, but apparently my mom buys it sometimes, not every single time. I think now we can go and pay for all the stuff we got, and I'm a little bit terrified to know how expensive it will be. Like, you guys guess, for everything you saw in this video, is that it's gonna be more or less than 100 American dollars. I bet that it will be a little bit less, or maybe like exactly 100 of dollars. I hope it will be cheaper anyways. <laughs> Like 
a lot of stuff we actually got for the new year and the original price was exactly 100 American dollars before I applied my membership card. Literally any person who is going to this store, like every single one has a membership card. It's free, by the way. Uh, after I applied it, it appeared to be 5,500 rubles, which is like $20 cheaper. Not bad. I just ordered a taxi to deliver all this stuff back home. And I guess see you tomorrow cooking all the New Year meals that we were planning to do. See you tomorrow. It's about the New Year Eve already. The Christmas tree, a tiny artificial Christmas tree is ready. The gifts are ready too. I actually carried this tiny gift from Lisa. And I'm really excited to see what is inside. By the way, here is a very old Dead Maros, uh, Father Frost, the Russian Santa Claus and some of really cool authentic decorations that are maybe some of them older than I am. This one especially, I think this one is older than I am. I just asked mom how old is this Christmas toy and she said it's not only older than I am, it's also older than her, so it's like more than 50 years old. That's, that's really cool. Another one, the same style, looking a little bit different, also pretty old, and I think it's also one of my favorite toys here. I wanna show you two things before going to cook some New Year stuff. Here's TV and every single New Year they have a lot of Soviet movies on it. This one is The Irony of Faith, very nice movie and I think my mom and granny watched it like more than 10 times and anyway they find it quite fun to watch. That's one of my recommendations. I watched it a year ago for the first time in my life and I quite liked it. And another thing I wanna show you is this tiny New Year tree. I actually made it myself. I mean, I colored this stuff myself last year when I just started making videos about Russia. These are literally the people who supported me last year. Welcome to our kitchen. It's quite small. It's less than six squared meters, which is a typical thing for Khrushchevka's apartments. Um, the old Kami Blocks building, I think this one is like 40 or 50 years old. And I would like to see this place renovated, but apparently not this year. Что? Можешь говорить, что это плохая примета, когда в шоу включать уроки? Вау! I have no idea how, but my mom can do these two eggs. I'm, I'm never able to clean it like this. We are in the middle of cooking stuff, and you can hear my family somewhere behind me. Um, a huge group just arrived and my granny gave this to me. <laughs> so huge bottle of, I think, homemade wine. Here's the Olivia salad, the crab salad, and here's the potato boiling and the chicken is resting somewhere inside of the oven. And this one is famous shuba salad, herring under the pure coat that looks just like this. I'm gonna show you it on the table a bit later. It took a little bit of time to prepare the food. And then we had a long dinner chatting about the past year and hoping that 2022 will be a better one. And here's the food we had this day. Salat Olivier, crabový salat, запеченная курица с пюрешкой, бутерброды с красной икрой, бутеры с рыбой, бутеры со шпротами, Shuba, my auntie's signature salad with KFC fries and legendary holodets that I didn't dare to try. After dinner it was the gifting time and then we headed outside to blow some fireworks and say goodbye to our guests. And the last hour of the year it was just my granny, my mom and myself, and Mr. Putin. Apparently it's like a tradition in Russia to listen to his speech right before the new year. Welcome to 2022 from Russia and apparently this yard is such a cool place. Like, look at the decorations behind me. These people live in a much better community than people at my own coming blog. Whatever, I wish you a happy new year. Thank you for being with me. Thank you for all the support and see you next time.